Hi guys, welcome back to the channel. It's Lauren, thank you so much for watching. I hope you're doing well. Today I'm so excited because I'm gonna be talking all about the new Kaleidos Night of Creation collection. They sent this to me in PR and I'm excited to show you swatches, comparisons. I have two different looks going on. I did a graphic look, who am I? I also have this look, so there's gonna be tons of information. Use the timestamps and chapters to go where you wanna go. But I'm excited to share with you my thoughts and just, you know, the collection itself. I'm always excited about Kaleidos launches. They just have a soft spot in my heart. I feel like they really go in with the fantasy and the concept and all of that. And I feel like it's no exception with this collection. So a bit about the collection, let's just get into it. The Night of Creation collection has two different quads in it. These are in the same format as the quads from the last collection. This is the quad Flowing Haze. They all have three mattes and then one kind of special shade in them. And then the one that's on my eyes today, this is Glowing Iris. Again, we have three matte shades and then one kind of special sparkly shade in here. Here. And then this fall collection also features new products. So we have six liners. These are all like multicolor liners and we've never seen them before from Kaleidos. It's like a new formula, a new product, which is really exciting, really fun, kind of different. I don't have prices or anything yet, but this collection is gonna be launching on September 14th at 8 p.m. PST on Kaleidos' site. So we have a little bit of time. I'm really glad that there's some time between launch to decide if you want it. And I hope that this video can be helpful if you have other Kaleidos things or other things in your collection you can kind of decide if a piece or two or the whole thing's right for you or not so i'm just gonna get straight into swatches first the first quad here is flowing haze it's the most neutral out of the two the first shade in it is a matte and it's kind of this taupey gray almost leaning purple shade, but it still has a neutrality to it. The next shade is the special shade, the sparkly one. This is a dual chrome with a black kind of gray base. It has some gold shimmer to it, some pink shimmer to it. I feel like it's not super vibrant over the black base. It's definitely more of a grungy duo chrome. Then for the next color, this is more of a rosy purple. Again, it has a lot of gray in it. I feel like this shade and the first matte that I swatched are a little bit close. I wish there was a little bit more different between them just for personal preference I think you could get a little more dimension out of the quad that way and then last here is a really really deepened like blackened purple it has a lot of gray it's kind of like desaturated and so although it is colorful it is still very neutral so that is flowing haze all swatched out next to each other so you can see comparisons between all the colors. The next quad is called Glowing Iris, and this one definitely has a more monochromatic purple theme. To me, this one's just a little more cohesive and definitely my favorite out of the two. So first shade here, this is a matte, very bold kind of periwinkle shade. So pigmented, so beautiful. All of the mattes in both of these quads, as well as the quads that came out last time, are so creamy and pigmented and just like buttery soft, like so, so smooth. Then we have the shimmery shade Shade. This is not a duochrome. Instead, this is more of just like a sparkly, really beautiful lavender, like a grayed lavender with a silver sparkle on top. It does have a base on it, so it's not necessarily sheer, and it is so, so beautiful. I really love how this works with the rest of the palette. Then we have the lightest matte in here. This is more of like a straight up periwinkle. It almost has like something kind of pastel to it. And then last, we have another purple shade. This one's kind of similar to the purple in the last quad this has a little bit more richness to it it's more saturated um i do wish that they weren't so similar you know coming out in the same collection maybe in different collections it'd be better but here is the palette all swatched out i really love this monochromatic look it's just so cohesive and i feel like all of the colors have enough gradation between them to make a look work you're gonna want to like purple though for sure moving on to the liners these are called the epiphany glow melt on eyeliners and there's actually a few different finishes in here so i'm going to talk about that a little bit but I'm going to start off with the Radiant Spectrum Multichromes. There are two in that range and these are supposed to have the whitest color flip to them. Starting off with Solaris, this has a black base and it goes from like a golden honey color into like a green. There's a little bit of a red and kind of an orange flip going on in this one. And again, it has that like gray kind of blackened base to it as well. Next is the shade Tourmaline. This has a green to kind of yellow, golden to pink, more of like a purpley pink 
kind of shift whereas the other one is a little bit more warm and has more of those oranges and reds going on this also I feel like the green in it really can take over on it I've definitely seen both of these colors in different like multi-chrome eyeshadows that I've seen from different brands next we have a velvet multi-chrome this one is a unique texture and color and they say it's supposed to brighten your eyes like a VR filter so the only shade that's in this formula is night of creation this is the purple eyeliner this one also has a black base it just broke on me as I'm filming this so oh, I'm so sad I had it rolled out a little bit but this one definitely is one of the drier ones out of the bunch that's pretty unfortunate I'll try to keep you guys updated on that so this one I definitely see the velvet nature of this it's not as um, metallic as the other ones it has a little bit of a duochrome going on from like a more cool tone purple to something a little more violet a little bit more warm and it also again has that like black base on it next we have the prismatic multi-chromes these are diamond like shifts so it has a wide color shift and it's supposed to have a shine like a sudden spark so the flip on these are a little bit more intense when they do kind of flash the first one seven C's has a golden kind of limey shift and it goes all the way to something a little more teal like a blue green it's really beautiful these are some of my favorite ones out of the liner so far that I've used I really like these two green ones um, I like the shift on them and I definitely can tell they like spark a little bit more than the other colors next is the shade limelight this one is a little bit deeper of a green so it doesn't have as like light of a golden shift going on instead this one kind of ventures a little more into blue I really like this one a lot I love that kind of tealy blue color it's one of my favorites when it comes to duochrome shadows I'm such a sucker it's like a jeweled C and I love it and then last my favorite liner out of everything is the dynamic metallic so this one does not have a shift to it but it has a really sparkly kind of icy look and I feel like it's very vibrant and beautiful nonetheless and I feel like this is the shade that I'll use the most so the only one in this formula is called sea sparkle and it is a really interesting silvery blue I feel like it's not a straight up silver there is something blue about it and I really love it I feel like again it's the one that I probably use the most and could see being the most versatile out of everything here I'm gonna put a few clips of what I can get in different lightings just to see if I can show you the flips they're just really hard to show on such a small swatch all right, I hope those swatches were helpful. I'm so sad that one of the liners broke. I filmed this video in different parts, so I might say later that they didn't, but since filming that, one has just the purple one. It was creating like a really thick swatch and it was a little bit rolled up, so I'm gonna give it the benefit of the doubt because <laughs> none of the other ones have had issues yet, but um, yeah, I'll keep you updated on that. Hopefully it's just that one. And I also talk about it later in the video how it's a little bit drier, so that might have also been a bit of the reason. So anyway, let's get into some comparisons though so for the quads this one glowing iris I feel like the closest thing and what a lot of you guys wanted to see is the comparison between that and the futurism six palette I believe so this is lunar lavender and then this is the glowing iris quad they are definitely different the purples in the top are not nearly as like blue leaning i'm also going to show you comparison swatches and all of that so here they are swatched out next to each other they really don't have anything that's overlapping or i feel like anything that's even relatively a dupe between the two the only other color story i feel like might have something similar is from the escape pod it does have this kind of blurple look here so i'll swatch that one out i do feel like those kind of blurples in both the palettes are similar the one in the escape pod is just slightly more blue than it is purple and not quite as deep but those are quite similar if that's the only color you're looking for maybe the escape pod palette is enough for you as for the flowing haze palette I feel like this one might be the one that has a few more dupes so the first thing that came to mind is the more brown toned quad that came out with the last collection although they're not exact I do think because they're both neutrals there can be some overlap here I think it's like the coffee quad I don't know the one from the last one the brown one does lean a little bit more warm toned and the flowing haze one has a lot more more like gray to it and it's a little more cool toned it all has kind of this ashy purple thing going on underneath so even though they look very similar I do not think that they're that close in actuality um, once they're swatched out and I thought really fast I would just hold up all of the quads so you could see them all laid out and how these two the top two are kind of similar these are from the new collection these are the older collection but I don't think there's actually any overlap even though these top two seem similar so those are the four quads that I would just 
try to <laughs> maneuver these in my hands so you can see them all. I did feel like one of the colors from the Club Nebula seemed kind of similar. So this kind of purpley shade, it's like a dusty purple, seemed very similar to the darkest matte shade in here. So those two swatched out, they're very, very close. The one from the Flowing Haze palette has a little bit more depth to it. It's a little more purple, whereas the Club Nebula one is a little more gray and less colorful, but very similar colors. I think those ones are pretty close. Going back Back to again the Lunar Lavender palette. I feel like this kind of rosy neutral shade could be similar to again the kind of rosier neutral shade in here, but they actually aren't. I actually would have preferred maybe if this shade was more like the Lunar Lavender or maybe this shade up here was because then there'd be a little bit more difference in the palette and I think actually that would have been really beautiful. I wish that happened, but really no similarities there. And I think that's everything. I've looked through all of them. So those are the closest ones that like just looking at them, you're like, mm, how similar are they? Really, this is close to the Club Nebula color. And then as for the glowing iris, really the only thing I can find is this one's similar to the one in the Escape Pod. Those ones are pretty close. They're technically not dupes, but like almost basically. If they're the only two colors you want and you have either of those, then you might be good. But I know that Indelica's palette isn't even available anymore, so I don't know how many people that applies to if you got your hands on it. So other than that, I think we're ready to get into some actual looks. So let's do the graphic liner look that I did first. I hope you guys like that look. It was really fun to do. I'm really glad I did it and got out of my coverage zone, so I hope you enjoy it. All right, let's get into this kind of graphic liner look. I don't normally do something like this, but I was really inspired by these lines and I wanted to give them a fair shot. Plus there is this really pretty look on their Instagram actually right now, which just kind of features the liners. There's a little bit of shadow going on, but I kind of want to channel something like that. I'll pop the picture up here. So let's get started. I'm going to prime first. That's important. I am going to set it just slightly because I, I don't know, I want something for the liners to grip onto a little bit more. And I don't know if like cream on cream is going to be weird. So that just feels like the right choice. So I'm taking a little bit of coconut this is from the Sydney Grace and Tina the Fancy Face collaboration Tropicolor palette. This isn't quite matte and I kind of like that it's gonna have a little shimmer but I'm dusting it on very lightly. All right now for the liners I'm very nervous. Okay remember I don't normally do this so if it looks jacked up that is completely why. Hopefully the liners will make it easy. I'm gonna figure out what gradient I want really fast. Oh my gosh it's so pretty. All right so here's like a quick little line I did. I'm gonna switch these two here but you can kind of see how they all kind of become a gradient I think I'm going to try to do something like that and I really want to focus like some type of line I guess above my crease that's really what I'm thinking maybe I'll do this more the greens and blues and purples and then do that kind of like red down here I'm gonna try that okay I think I figured it out I'm gonna do the lower lash line first because it will be the easiest for me like it 100% <laughs> will I'm gonna start right at the tear duct So far with these liners, I have noticed that they stay put. So I have a feeling they're gonna have some pretty good longevity. I'm gonna add a little bit of this other color out from that. I mean, you can't really tell, it's not that big of a deal. We're gonna do the greens on top though. This you should be able to really, really see. I want it to be like actually above my crease. So I'm trying to look straight ahead. I'm gonna go lightly, I think, at first, and then go in and really like beef up the line and really get it more pigmented. Okay, I think it's like kind of coming together. I was getting a little nervous, but I think I think it might work at least decent for my first attempt. Okay, 
Oh my gosh, okay. I don't know if you're zoomed in enough. Let me, I'm gonna zoom you in a little bit more. This is where we're at so far. That's just like a pretty rough pass. I'm gonna go back over, kind of solidify the line. I feel like it looks pretty good. Like I can't really complain. So I'm just really building up the gradient and being a little more confident with my strokes as well. I'm like not gonna wanna take this off. <laughs> but it also gives me a little bit of confidence to do this a little bit more because it really didn't take that long. It was precise, which is not normally my thing. I'm more of like watercolor eyes, but it looks pretty cool. And I feel like these kind of did the work of the gradient for me a bit. Like I really wasn't sitting here blending. I really love the silver. This is probably the one I can see myself like incorporating the most into my life. And I think I'm gonna even try to incorporate it into my look with the palette. There's something about it. It's silver, but kind of blue. I think it's really cool. Trying to get that edge like to not be too blunt is kind of an issue. But maybe if I had more of like a brush Okay, they're for sure not even, so forgive me, but that's what it's looking like right now. I definitely feel like I'm gonna beef up the bottom as well. I honestly feel like it's the worst part of the look is the bottom lash line because I was too much of a baby to just go in and I wish I kind of did that, but I did want to use all the liners, so it is what it is. All right, I'm going to add a little bit of some fun really fast, just to kind of like get a full completed look. I'm taking some of the highlighters. I'm taking a Diamond Dasher and I'm gonna put that kind of up on my brow bone. I'm just using my finger. I'm also gonna put a little bit of that on my inner corner. I'm just gonna tap a little more shimmer, just on the lid. I'm gonna add mascara and then if I feel like I wanna add a little shadow, I'm gonna do that. But I wanna add the mascara first to make sure it's what I want. I'm gonna take this off from the inner corner because I really hate it. Just because I think there's a way I could really love this look and I don't think this dark, or at least comparedly to everything, this dark liner on my inner corner is it. I'm just using my cellar water and it's coming off pretty good, which is nice. Because like I said, they really do lock down. I love it a million times better. Just to keep that inner corner like open, I feel like this graphic liner look has a lot of like negative space and having it closed off there really was not the vibe. kind of finished the look that I like. I'm as zoomed in as I can be. Uh, the angles are not the same, so forgive me, but um, I think I was able to get a decent amount of control for these being like liners, and these aren't the thinnest uh, liners. I would say they're actually a little bit thicker than a regular twist up. I don't know if they did that because of breakage. I've had issues with different twist ups from different brands, and so I don't know if that's part of it. Even the ones from Danessa Myricks, which are similar, the one I have is literally broken from the base and it's thin, so I don't know if that's part of it. I even had a little bit of like the yellowish one. I mean, it's duochromatic, kind of multi-chrome, so if, in some lights it's a certain color and in some lights it's not, but I added a little bit of that to the inner corner and I like this. Hmm, kind of fun, a little different for me. I'm gonna zoom you out so you can see like the full 
what this would look like, like out full face, but I think that it was pretty easy and I like the way that they performed. I guess I'll give a few thoughts on the liners now that I've used all of them on the eyes technically now, which is really fun. I'm glad I pushed myself to do this look because this is out of my comfort zone, like I said, doing something this graphic, but I do feel like that's what these are best suited for. So I really wanted to give them the shot and also the collection kind of inspired me to do this. Like this is a look I also wanted to do with these liners. So I would say I really enjoy the packaging. I think it's sturdy, it's pretty. Um, there's something about it. Like I really like the packaging of these. And like I said, I'm not normally a twist up liner type of person. I would say my favorite shade is the kind of blue silver one. It's called Sea Sparkle. It doesn't have really a duochrome or multi-chrome to it like the other ones do, but it's really metallic, really pretty. And I feel like this specific shade of silver is quite unique and um, yeah that's probably my favorite I can also see myself using it in the most diverse ways and not only something like this or like only as a base I would actually maybe put this on my inner corner use it just as a liner like this is the one I'm probably gonna get most creative with outside of that I really like the two kind of greeny ones there's one that leans a little green gold and one that's more like a green teal blue kind of thing those are seven C's and limelight and I really like those as well the purple one is really pretty really bold um, maybe not quite as much duochrome again but I do find this one's just slightly more dry it's not unworkable I feel like the color was really nice just want to point that out from something I noticed and then probably my least favorite are the two that I used on the bottom these are really pretty colors I like these as shadows when it comes to duochrome and multi-chromes but I think the black base on these one is something that you know I didn't really enjoy using it on the inner corner I don't know they're not bad by any means I just felt like the black base when I was using them on my eyes is what was showing up first and then I really had to pack it on a little bit more to get the color to show up. Again, not bad, but just at the bottom of my ranking if you wanted to know which ones were my favorite. But overall, I'm really happy with all of them and I'm really happy with the formula that it dries down. I think that's really useful for these specific liners and what you might do with them. I think that they can work for a graphic liner. I love that they didn't break. I've just, the Odin's Eye ones, <laughs> I wanted those to work so bad they break. The ColourPop ones, I wanted those to work so bad they break. The Danessa Myricks ones, which are the most similar thing that I have to this broke like I've just had a lot of issues with that so I hope these won't dry out over time I'm hopeful <laughs> but yeah those are my first impression thoughts um, after swatching them yesterday and kind of dealing with them but then actually applying them on the eyes so I will keep trying them see how I like them if anything changes I'll keep you updated but so far I really do like them all right so I'm back I took off the liner but I didn't take off my mascara just because I didn't want to irritate my eyes I really try to avoid doing multiple eye looks um, in one day if I can help it just because my little eyelids are so sensitive, but I had to for today. So we're gonna prime again. I'm using the Sigma base once again. I don't think the mascara being on will be too much of an issue, but we'll see. That look really was so pretty. I went and showed Sam before I took it off because I was like, I want you to see it before. I normally don't do looks like this. And he was like, oh, it looks so good. Like he was looking at the rainbow. He was like, it blends so perfect. It's like, I know the duochromes really do a good job, especially if you pick them in the best order that you can. Uh, the duochromes themselves kind of just all work together to really make a seamless look. Anyway, if you can't tell, I'm like very happy that I did that. Let's get into the quads though. So the first one here, this one is called Flowing Haze really pretty some really nice like cooler browns this one has a little more pink in it i think though i'm gonna go with the purple one uh this one is called glowing iris and i just think this is so pretty this color is so bright i'm probably gonna stick to these three that's what i'm thinking for the look i want to create today so yeah this is we're just gonna start going in i think i think starting off i'm gonna take the lightest uh kind of periwinkle type shade i really like the purples that are in here because they're kind of that periwinkle, blurple, are they blue, are they purple type of shade. And I feel like that's just unique. Not that they don't exist, but you know, it's definitely a more unique color to see and really fun to create a quad around. So I'm gonna be putting this, I'm being a little bit more precise. I don't wanna take it up too high yet, but I'm just building with the lightest shade. I know from experience that with Kaleidos mattes, sometimes they can kind of deepen up more than I expect them to. So I really wanna take my time and blend this the way I want. <laughs> just taking my time. I'm doing like a classic eye look for me, but just with a little bit more bold color than 
what I would say I normally do at the moment, but I love that it's monochromatic. I think that's really sleek looking. I could also see this color just looking so good all over the lid, like just that. And although I'm keeping it kind of low, I am working in that outer corner and I'm kind of creating a bit of like a cat eye or something a little elongated, not too much, but I'm kind of focusing on that. And then when I have less product in my brush, I'm bringing it in so I get more of a gradient in the inner corner. All right, so far I like where it's at. I'm so tempted right now to just put the lid shade on and like, I don't know, do we even do more? I'm not sure, but let's just, I'm gonna put the lid shade on. I think it might turn a little deeper than I think. Oh, it's so pretty. I feel like this is a very unique purple color. It's like cool toned, kind of gray silver. I love it. I love these sparkly shades. I wish so badly that they would come out with more shimmers. <laughs> I want more shimmers than one in the quad. Like I appreciate that at least the one that we get is like so amazing. And I really do think the mattes are beautiful. So buttery, so creamy, but I can't help myself, okay? I'm a shimmer girl. And I'm just being really careful. I didn't lay down a glitter glue or anything but I'm just tapping really gently and building up slowly so I don't get any fallout. All right, so that's a lid shade down. This definitely has a base to it. It's not just like a sheer sparkle, which I actually think looks really great. I actually like that. Sometimes I'm like, oh, I wish it was sheer, but I think it works for the shadow a lot. I do wanna add something to deepen up, but you know, I think I'm gonna go for more like a brighter pop than I am a deeper pop, at least first. I can always add the deeper color later, which I wasn't exactly expecting to do, but I'm just tapping that on the outer edge. I'm gonna take like just an empty blending brush and just kind of blend the edges. An empty, <laughs> a clean, a clean blending brush. I'm doing a little over the middle as well. I feel like that purple was very pigmented and where I laid it down, it blended but it just stayed very pigmented, so I'm just tapping over the edge with a little of the shimmer. And I kind of like it here. I don't really want to go darker. I don't. I'm going to pull in, though, one of the highlighters. This one's called Skywalker, and I think I'm going to add this. Do I want it on my inner corner? Do I want it on my brow bone? I don't know. Maybe we'll just put it on the center of the eye. Oh, yeah. Kind of tapping up. I feel like that really, like, took it to the next level. Someone is listening to the song Hot Hot Hot. You know that one like, it feeling hot 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 outside my window. So if you can hear it, I hope you enjoy the party. I do want to try to find an inner corner color. I'm like going through all my palettes. I have like Angelica's palette here. Maybe I'll do that shade. <laughs> what do I want to do? Okay, maybe we'll try one of the liners on the inner corner. What do you think, you guys? I'll maybe try to use them again. Yeah, let's do that. I'm gonna see, I hope this isn't too dark. That's my only like what I'm nervous about, but I'm lightly putting that kind of silvery blue. Yeah, it's a little dark, but I'm gonna top it over with a shadow. So I'm gonna put it on. This is that Sea Sparkle, I think it is. Blend it out while it's still able to with a little brush. This one's a little dark for me, but if you have a darker skin tone, this would be really pretty, I think as an inner corner where it actually bring light. I'm gonna take the silver from the Cyber Bronze palette and top over that and see. Oh wow, full on Tin Man. <laughs> Ooh, I don't know if I like that, but it's the choice we've made. We made our bed, we have to lay in it. It's not horrible, it's just, I, the inner corner shouldn't take away from this beautiful eye look, you know what I mean? But it is. I'm gonna add a little more mascara. I think I'm gonna be done because I just don't want it to be too much. I feel like that's how I've been enjoying color lately is like doing it more simplistic. I can do bold color, I can do bold shimmer, all that, but just keeping it a little more contained and not having everything be a lot helps me feel really still pretty and like still my vibe for right now what I'm into. So let me add some mascara and I'll show you guys where we're at. <laughs> if I add anything else, I might need to like, even out that inner corner with something on the outer lash line. I just can't stop myself. I'm taking the purple liner. This one's called Night of Creation. And I am going to just barely put that in the outer corner and match it up to the bottom lash line. Blending it a little bit. I'm also gonna add a little bit of this right above my lash line. I'm adding a little bit of the Pat McGrath highlighter in Lunar Allure. All right guys, so here is the final look. 
I feel like I could have done it without the inner corner. It's very bright, but I just think if I could do it over again, I feel like it would have been a little more my style to not have something so intense, so metallic. You know, I would do that differently, but otherwise the rest of the eye look I really like. I even really like how the liner turned out on that lower lash line. I think it's still bright and a pop. I was glad to use that liner again too in a different way than in the previous one because I wanted to see how it kind of pulled or didn't or whatever because it was a little bit drier. I feel like the liner formula for these, it's not like insanely creamy, but it's also not overly dry. And so the purple one seemed the driest out of everything, but I feel like it went on great. I like the pigment. So I, I really like that I used that again. I love that I added the Skywalker to this quad. I think if you're going to pick up the glowing iris and you have Skywalker, like use them together. <laughs> They're so pretty. Whether you like add it out here, on your eyes, inner corner, whatever you're gonna do. I just think it's a good combo. I love how bright the matte stayed. I love the shimmer on the lid. Um, I had a little bit of fallout, but like really not much. So I'm very happy with how this eye look turned out. Super easy too, so, so easy to blend. All right guys, so I wanna talk a little bit about the quad. Really, I can only give thoughts on use on the glowing iris, because it's the only one I've used so far. And I have to say, it's like, it is my favorite. I was drawn to it the most out of the two, but I really feel like it's such, a pretty monochromatic quad and I really think you can do a lot. I mean, you're gonna get a purple look, don't get me wrong, but I can see myself just using these two colors for something a little bit more smoky and grungy. I could see myself just using this all over the lid as a matte. I can see myself doing this eye look again, pulling in a few other things here and there to kind of like, you know, amp it or take it different ways, but I really like this one. As for Flowing Haze, I do really like this color story. It's definitely a lot more neutral. And then even the duochrome in here, it's one of those black based duochromes and those just aren't particularly my favorite types of multi-chromes duochromes or anything um, just because they tend to be a little bit darker of a look just naturally but I do feel like it fits the collection so it's more of just like a personal preference on it again I can see it being really pretty and grungy definitely part of the vibe I feel like the haziness of it the fact that it's a fall collection I think it works and I will keep you guys updated as I use this one again since I haven't yet as for the packaging you know it, you're gonna love it, you're gonna hate it. I feel like, you know, they're gonna do it. <laughs> they did it with the last collection with this kind of lace. This is in the same exact styling, except that this is kind of a velvet and then it has this flower of life design on here. The whole collection is Night of Creation, so they really went with that theme. I kinda like that it's a uterus and, you know, the kind of vibe. They go full fantasy, this is what they wanted and they're gonna do it. You're gonna be into it or you're not. So yeah, it's definitely gonna be a thing to store it because this is, it's like heavy. It's like like a metal piece you know it's it feels quality <laughs> but yeah that's definitely a part of the quads and it'll be interesting to see if they keep doing the quads because they are different than like their six pans this is what they were doing for a while then we got the bigger palettes we got two in this form this is a collab palette that's no longer available from Angelica it's the Club Nebula but then there's the escape pod which is still available and these are in the same formatting we got the random kind of flower punk palette and then now we're kind of getting the quads and that's what we've been left with so it'll be interesting to see I guess if they do more quads in the future or whatnot I really hope they get back to maybe something a little bigger or just more shimmers like I know that mattes are so helpful and useful and a lot of people really love mattes but I'm someone who really loves shimmer so I really want to see more of this formula and I feel like they do such great shimmer formulas too so it's like I not only want shimmers I like crave shimmers from them like Kaleidos shimmers that all being said in terms of performance I'm really happy the eye look turned out exactly how I wanted it to. It blended nice. I didn't have any issues. Like I really like it. So I'm very happy with this collection. I love that it's a little bit smaller. We got the two quads. We got a new product, the six liners, and I really like the liners as well. I'm very happy with them so far. I think they're innovative and a little bit different. Not that no one's ever done them, but you know, they're not as common as some of the other stuff. So I think it's a fun addition. I think it really fits with their vibe and kind of the indie multi-chrome thing that they have going on. Definitely bold color, graphic looks, alternative looks, things like that. And so I think it fits with the line really well. So I'm pretty happy with it. I'd love to know your guys' thoughts now that you've seen the looks I've done. And as always, I hope it was helpful. So thanks so much for watching, guys. I hope you have an amazing day. And other than that, I will see you in the next video. Bye.